Hey guys, uh, happy to see y'all. Hopefully you guys are happy to see me. Welcome to day two of Saturday Con 2022. Uh, we've been enjoying the event, the whole con so far, the whole virtual con. B great way to be safe as well. But today we're going to be going over uh, our conversation with a very special guest who I'm sure is an influence and an inspiration to a lot of you guys who uh, create or aspiring to create comics, manga, webtoons, whatever the case may be. I know that's the case for me, and I'm sure that's the case for a lot of you. Uh, we will be kind of talking with the creator of Radiant, a um, very successful series from France that also has um, an adaptation, um, an anime adaptation that's doing well, two seasons. And here we have our special guest, uh, hopefully now, cool friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, cool to say, <laughs> Tony Valente. Tony, how you doing? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm doing very well. Uh, you know, just doing our best over here, trying to get this event going, and I'm uh, very yeah. happy and appreciative of uh, your time because uh, I know how Thanks valuable valuable it is to you know put this together, and I know how busy you are. Um, and also glad to see that you're doing pretty well, uh, right? Yeah, I'm good. That's my awesome. day off. Oh, okay. Your day off? <laughs> yeah. Great, great, great. Uh, glad, glad we could catch you on your day off. So we're just going to be going over a couple questions that I'm sure a lot of people will have for you. But again, it can also be a conversation, kind of go back and forth if you have questions for me. Kind of like uh, what you what you you would expect this to be, you know, have fun here. And then we'll see if we have a little time to uh, take questions from those in attendance. Uh, so starting off, because we don't have, I'm not sure we have as much time as, you know, we'd like, but to kind of go through things, um, first, talk a little bit about your journey to this point. Um, your... I guess, art, artistic struggles, you know, the things that you went through, maybe some of the highs and lows and how you finally landed at this point. Um, and maybe you can start with um, the four princes of Ghana. On. Yeah. Got nice. it this time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how, how that came about all the way leading to uh, the success you have now with Radiant. Uh, so first, I started uh, almost 20 years ago in France uh, with a publishing company named uh, Delcourt with the Four Princes of Ghana, as you said so well. Uh, that was a French uh, bande dessinée, a French comic, so a full color, um, big format, not a manga, and just 46 pages. That's the, 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 the range of, um, of pages you have in a French comic book. 46 to 50 pages, colors, and just one every year. So that's not that much. So I started with that. Uh, that was my first series, uh, four issues. Then I went on with uh, a title of mine that I created, that I, I wrote, colored, uh, draw, of course, that was called Anna Atori, uh, which was kind of a mix into... Uh, coming from French uh, comics, I was diving into uh, manga a little bit in the style. I thought in the type of story, but with with 46 pages, you don't have to, that much space to tell yeah, a story, I can to tell a manga story. So that was a big frustration that led me to create Radiant later. Awesome. awesome. Because I wanted to tell a long story and I didn't have much space. On your own terms after, as well. Uh, yeah. After the, the, the second series, I made a third one uh, that I didn't wrote. Uh, that was the case of the fourth Princess of Ghana. I was just drawing and making the colors on it. And the third series, I made just a drawing, uh, which was called uh, Speed Angels, more into a um, uh, contemporary uh, North American city with uh, action, kind of a 90s action movie type of things not that yeah. much manga and yeah like very a, far like, from my, from, yeah from what i'm doing now like a die hard 
Yeah, more or less. A mix mm. between Die Hard and maybe uh, Charlie's Angels. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Might be a little campy. Uh, can you talk about? Can you talk a little bit? About, and, and I'm guessing after that, then Radiant. Then Radiant. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, can you talk a little bit about you know some of the frustrations and you know, like how the performances? Obviously, we see Radiant is you know the most su- successful one. But can you briefly talk mm. about you know your uh, the reception and uh, the successes with those, and you know maybe how that may pushed you to do even better or maybe did made you feel you wanted to quit the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's often the case that I want yeah. to quit the whole thing. Um, <laughs> but so, um, yeah, for the first, maybe you could start with um, the reception for yeah, Ghana. On the reception. The, yeah. Uh, when I, when I started uh, the, the Four Princes of Ghana, uh, I was very young. Uh, I started at 17, the first pages. Then yeah, the, the, the first issue came out, I was uh, I was about 20 years old. Mm. And because of that, uh, a lot of people were interested in knowing uh, what a young guy was doing in the industry. So there was a mildly good reception because of that. Mm. But the work I've done on it and the, the, the story and things like that didn't grab that much uh, attention from the the audience. So it was okay in terms of selling, but not a, what we call a success. Then my second series, uh, Anatoly, that I was creating alone, uh, I was really into that. And it it was uh, published in a magazine also. And in a magazine, there was a tremendous reception that was huge. But when it came out, that was a complete failure. That, uh, <laughs> that yeah, was... I had my hope. Yeah, my hopes up. You know, like, but, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that was like uh, that was fr- frustrating because when it was into the magazine, a lot of people were really excited about that uh, yeah. writing online about it and sending me messages on social media or even on. I had a blog at the time. And also people calling me from the industry to tell me that they they were really into what I was, yeah, things like that. And also a lot of work coming from um, publishers uh, telling, oh, the, what you're creating is great. We want to work with you. And a lot of that happening. So I was sure that the, the first issue was going to be big. That was not the case at all. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, then, can that can happen. <laughs> every issue of that series, there were uh, three of them, uh, was bad. Uh, the, the, the numbers we had with the, with the first volume were not great. Ah. The second was worse. The third was super low. Yeah, as as then, as you can imagine, I'm I'm sure usually the first volumes are you usually the best performing ones. Yeah, and usually. Then, yeah. And when you now that I have the opportunity to see that through Radiance, I saw that from the beginning, when the first came out, it was okay. But when a second came out, there was more uh, attention of the the audience. The the what do we call it, the placement in the in the bookstores was bigger than the first one. So that mm. was a sign of maybe that can become something. Yeah. Then the third one came out of Radiant. That was even bigger. And my publisher at the time said, that's the, that all the best sellers follow the same trend that you're wow. following right now. That doesn't mean that you will have a bestseller, but all the best sellers have the this story of selling more the next one and more the next one and more ah. the next one. Awesome. That was a case on Radiant. And until now, it's yeah. still the case. The, the the last one that came out in France um, three months ago, mm-hmm. still better than the previous one. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations on that. You know, obviously, Thank you, you know, uh, <laughs> happy for you uh, on that front. Um, what are like some first we can, I, I like to touch briefly on your influences and people, you know, the type of artists you look at in the industry that help 
drive you, maybe light up a little fire under you. And, you know, you're excited, almost like taking you back to when you were much younger consuming this content. Yeah. Uh, and maybe even some of them back in the day that are uh, are still influences on you today. And you can kind of cover. Uh, let's let's just touch on that as well. I also want to kind of go over, like you said, like you mentioned briefly, you know, the books got better placements moving moving forward. And yeah. I know you mentioned before that some of that, you know, maybe what could have potentially played a role with that was getting endorsements, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe you can talk, uh, touch on how you got the endorsement, but first maybe we could start with uh, your major influences currently and maybe back in the day that yeah. helped drive Radiant be what it is today. I guess when I was a kid and I fell in love with all of that was because of uh, Goku from Dragon Ball and uh, Ranma. Mm. Uh, because of those two heroes, uh, I fell really in love with this type of industry, this type of uh, storytelling. That shonen is manga, manga. Anime, shonen manga. Yeah. Even if Ranma is kind of a hybrid in type of manga, it's yeah. a bit of a shonen, a little bit of a shoujo because of yeah. all the, the love triangles there. That yeah. is into that. And also uh, comedy, and that's a lot of things in Rama. Um, so because of those two heroes, I was I was really in this type into this type of storytelling. Uh, I discovered first the anime on TV when I was a kid. Then when I came across the books in stores, I started reading manga at this time. That was the the, the beginning, and still uh, those two influences are pretty significant even today. Uh, but nowadays, my favorite thing is uh, like almost everybody, One Piece. Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, that's, that's great. Just you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I used to, I still, I, I like One Piece, and it is also a major influence of mine. Uh, it's just there was just one summer or something, and I just took a break, and I yeah. looked. And I look back and I see that I'm like a, a thousand <laughs> chapters a thousand behind. Films, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. You don't want to do that. Yeah. 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 Even you gotta, when, you when gotta, started, you gotta stay, stay on it, but keep, keep, keep going. You gotta, you gotta stay on it. Or you skip some part. How do you skip? How do you skip? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't do that. But I know friends of mine that, that does that. Yeah. Maybe you can skip because, you know, maybe they go to. Uh, Especially with maybe, but it's easier to do with the anime if there's like filler or something like yeah. that. So yeah, you can definitely skip some stuff. Maybe, but you're missing on a lot of things. <laughs> you're you're a super fan. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't sure. miss anything. <laughs> no, I don't okay. want. Okay. But I'm a bad yeah, fan. I, I don't remember anything about Dragon Ball. I didn't read Dragon Ball in years now. And yeah. Same. Sometimes when my daughter read Dragon Ball and when she talked me about some scene or some characters, I say who. <laughs> She's yeah, you're a bad fan. Yeah. yeah, a lot of stuff is a lot of stuff has changed now. There's there's a lot more, you know. You have Dragon Ball Super. You have, you have all social characters. The hair yeah. color is gone. You know, you got your yellow, <laughs> you got your blue, you got your green. Soon the they silver. got rainbows. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what about more um, any contemporary artists today that also do that for you? Yeah, uh, I'm really into My Hero Academia. It's mm. really one of my favorite things ever. And I just read the, the four last issues and that I had a blast. Uh, again, awesome. that's one of the, 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 the most incredible stories for me with mm. incredible world building and uh, yeah. storytelling and also the plot and um, the philosophy of it. I really dig into the, this type of uh, take on the superior role. Kind yeah, I go. What it means to be a, a hero, especially in that yeah. setting. Yeah, that's that's and, interesting. Uh, it does that very very well. Uh, so uh, I really love that. And on some other genre, I would say uh, Witch Hat Atelier. I don't know if you see. Yeah, I don't I know. I've not, no? I don't think I've heard that one. Do I have that? I have uh, some art there. Uh, as, just as, as I mentioned, yeah. Yeah, 
I cancel the operation. It's a little too high. <laughs> Mission failed. Oh, <laughs> it's not. It's not mission, a good mission, one. mission failed. Mission, mission failed. Yeah. <laughs> that, I think the name in okay. English it's Witch Hat Atelier. I think oh, it's okay. the name, and it's uh, completely different. It's not a shonen manga. It's not. I don't know. Maybe it's in the seinen side, mm. but. Um, yeah, I'm reading to it and Yotsuba. That's y Yotsuba. completely different. Yeah, and um, I know visually we talked uh, at some point how uh, artists like, um, at least for me, right? You know, you have, I have, for, for me, it's always been the people you mentioned, but obviously I'll, I'll throw in uh, Masashi Kishimoto, I'll throw in Akubo, uh, Yusuke Murata, and stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, artistically, those. Those and there, there are others: Inoue Takahiko, Boichi, who are just stunning. You see their work, and it's like, how do you have that much time <laughs> to do that? <laughs> Especially with the um, grueling schedule that these creators have. As uh, yeah. as you know, a lot of these people are making content and making it inside, but basically they're living in a box. And once in a while, they kind of pop their head out to say hello, but then they have to go back in the mm -hmm. box. Can you briefly touch on? Uh, any any fun stories or relationships you've had coming across any of these awesome creators? Uh, yeah, I I think I met uh, some of them uh, from. I think no, I know I met some of them. <laughs> <laughs> you might have dreamed. It might have been a dream. It yeah, might have been a dream the whole time because <laughs> it was so cool. So I yeah. met. Uh, I met Yusuke Murata, the, the author of uh, One Punch Man, and it's my artist, artist right? Yeah, uh, artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh, he's my favorite uh, artist ever, mm. all across the industry. Yusuke Murata is yeah the one that I love the most. Those those One Punch Man spreads, the Ice Shield Twenty One spreads, yeah, the the countless pages, sequential pages that are basically just animation frames. Yeah, dude is up there. 100%. He's he's so creative. Uh, he always have fun with with something. When when you read I Shield, you see when he's having fun with the storytelling, yeah. with the, 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 the composition, with all the details that he put into the panels. Um, same with One Punch Man, even farther in with One Punch Man. Yeah. But I was really really into uh, I Shield Twenty One. That was one of my favorite shonen. And what. <laughs> Brings me to to make shonen of, uh, a shonen of my own also. Uh, Aisha Twenty One was really important yeah. for me. Uh, so I met with him. Uh, he was super cool. He was not aware that he was like the god of manga. <laughs> I keep on yeah. telling him, you know, "I love you, right?" Yeah. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. But you know, uh, fanboy not on that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I was trying not to 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 be too much of a fanboy around yeah. him because he he bring with him all the Radiant series. He he was reading it and he told me a lot of uh, things about it, asked me a lot of questions, uh, point at some scenes and ask me questions very precise. And also, I was just blown away. I said, "Okay, I'm a big fan of." you <laughs> but you read me and you ask me questions that's yeah. weird yeah, it might be a dream it might be a, maybe maybe it's a yeah. dream maybe maybe <laughs> that's why that's, that's why i say i think i met some of them yeah but maybe. Uh, for example himself he was uh so he was super cool he he came by himself with no publisher we made a public conference together before we make a meeting just awesome. the two of yeah. us with a, uh we had a lunch and then we we went on a conference together and he was just a super fun, normal guy, but always working. That was, that was like the, the, the only uh, afternoon he took from, for weeks or, or maybe yeah. months, you know. He told me a little bit about uh, having a family and doing manga in Japan. That seemed to be really hard. He himself is a father. And uh, he asked me because I was with my daughter at the uh, hmm. at the event. He asked me about that, uh, how I deal with that, and uh, he was really into knowing how we 
how we make manga outside of Japan and comparing with his side of, um, of the industry and telling yeah. me that it was super hard, but super fun. He's really into that, you know. But also I met uh, the author of uh, Fairy Tale, Hiromashima, and he came, uh, that was kind of a surprise uh, meeting. I was in a restaurant with my publisher from Japan. My publisher told him that I was there. So he came to see me. We already met just a few minutes, uh, one year before that. And he came, it was at night, he was working. He came, he stayed with us 20 minutes. Then he went back to work and mm -hmm. he hasn't been to his house for like four, four days. So that was the type of yeah. work that I witnessed. Just, I was enjoying my meal and I say, okay, I'm going back. <laughs> go back to work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can imagine the the grueling schedule and uh, uh, how how demanding things are as a as an artist. For those of you who are you know listening and you want to be aspiring manga artist or anything like that, you live in the box twenty four seven. It's not as rewarding, and I'm as I'm sure you can attest to. Uh, even with an anime like you've uh, you've mentioned before, it, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't it doesn't match. Still, so you're gonna live in the box, right? You live in the box, and you have to love that. Yeah. <laughs> You have to, you have to love it. You have to accept you'll be it. Depressed all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You have to love your story. So yeah. uh, you how did the um, how did the uh, endorsement come about? Uh, yeah. I, so I had endorsement from uh, those two artists. Um, the first both one, of them. Uh, both of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first one one was from uh, Yusuke Murata for the, the first issue of Radiant in Japan. And that's my publisher in Japan that asked him if it was okay to do that. Yeah. He read the first manga, he said, okay, I, uh, I will endorse yeah. that. So he did a little drawing and a, a comment. So mm -hmm. on the first issue of Radiant in Japan, there's some, some, I don't know the name, but uh, something on it's the like cover. A, yeah, it's like a little tag yeah. and, and it's just yeah. added there. And, and uh, it probably allowed people in that in that space give, you know, be more open to uh, giving Radiant a, a chance, I imagine. Yeah, uh, the especially for the book uh, bookstore owners. That was uh, a big thing because that was a time when uh, the first uh, season of One Punch Man in anime was... Uh, was being streamed. So at this time, Yusuke Murata in bookstores was the god of the bookstore. You have an entire shelf for just One Punch Man. And when yeah. you know the war that is going on in shonen manga over there, having an entire shelf in every bookstore of the country just for one series, it's pretty big. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And on the side of that, I had my little space because <laughs> Yusuke Murata but, uh, was yeah. endorsing me uh, yeah. on a lot of um, in a lot of bookstores that I went. Uh, I saw that little space for me for the, the the beginning of the series because Murata was on the on the cover. Then on the second uh, issue that was uh, Hiromashima, so the author of Fairy Tale, and he made that because uh, I think first. He tweeted about Radiant without uh, being asked. Oh. He just read the first Radiant. At the mm -hmm. end of the volume, I mentioned uh, that I mentioned Mashima uh, in, in an interview. I don't know why. That, that was a question. And I mentioned Mashima. And he tweeted about that. Then my publisher went to, to him and said, okay, so ah. <laughs> you know what is Radiant? <laughs> Would you make Makes sense. Comment? Your publisher is smart. Yeah. Yeah, it's there, there's ever there's a raise. <laughs> <laughs> so so that yeah, that's cool. That uh, yeah, that uh, you know, for for those who don't know, that sometimes endorsements are done like that, and that can just help the series in 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 many ways. I imagine. Can you briefly talk about you know how the how your series went from manga to anime, and just like uh, uh, real quickly about you know that process and the little story of how that came about. Uh, so because it was published in Japan, uh, some people from the industry, from the industry, uh, could see that it was existing. And at the time, uh, 
producer from NHK, which is the, the national TV channel yeah. uh, from Japan. So Radiant read the first two volumes, was really into it, and waited for the third one to, to, to make a decision on it. And when the third one came out, uh, he said, okay, I'm a fan. That, that's what he told me. I want to, to make an anime out of it because I've got this 90s shonen vibe that I really dig into. He, he has the same age as me. Mm, okay. And uh, we grew up with the same influence, even if he was in Japan and me in France. In France, we were maybe the second country where the, the things came out after Japan, uh, historically. Now it's all over the world because of internet and everything. But yeah. even Dragon Ball at the time uh, in France was really big when it was streaming in Japan. In France, that, that was an instant success. Uh, so we were growing up with the same influences. And the producer, because of that, read Radiant and said, OK, I, I want to make an anime out of it. He reached out to us at the same time. Uh, the, um, so that's a long process. When the, yeah. the producer wants to do that, he has to go to a lot of steps to, to be able to make an anime out of it. Uh, but at the same time, another producer reached out to us, and that was, and I don't remember the name, Toei Animation. Oh, that yeah. makes Dragon Ball, One Piece, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, everybody knows Toei. Yeah. So Toei uh, reached out to us to for the same reason. And another guy from, uh, um, that was an anime director. He reached out to us, uh, to me, to, to, to meet me, to talk about anime. So yeah. three different uh, people, producers, uh, reached out to us to know if the license was available. That was when we were talking about anime. Still, that wasn't a reality because we had to wait for one more year for the decision to to be green light. Yeah. Um, I remember I'm, you said it was like uh, had to um it it was between that and uh uh shoujo like it got to a point where it was it wasn't about the series anymore and it it, it came to a choice between a show, shonen and a shoujo and yeah and uh, radiant got got the green light. Yeah because of the shonen because the the process is like like in TV reality, uh, reality TV, that's uh, <laughs> every producer comes with a project and they defend the project. And every two months, there was a meeting and they throw away some of the project and they keep you get eliminated. <laughs> yeah. And if you're not eliminate, eliminated, you go on with the project. That was a case of Radiant. And at the end, we were two, just two finalists. So Radiant on one side for Shonen and uh, another project that was rejected at the end. That was a Shoujo. So the decision was into Shonen or Shoujo and not the type of project or the quality of project they wanted to, to make anymore. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, man. And again, um, Happy for you and happy that that came, uh, came out. And all, overall, just happy for a lot of the success. I think um, a lot of people inspired by you for many reasons, especially after they see the work and they see how good it is, but also for the fact that you aren't uh, traditionally Japanese putting this together. I think just visually seeing, having someone who's able to accomplish that has inspired a lot of people who want to do similar things. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. when they try to do it, they'll learn, it's not beans. It, it, it ain't easy. You, 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 <laughs> there's a lot of hard work and a lot of obstacles. And so speaking of yeah. which, can you, one, first kind of talk about your relationship with uh, diversity as with SADM, it's, it's part of our mission and what we want to kind of bring further and, you know, expand on a lot more uh, within anime mm -hmm. and manga. And you can talk about that and how it relates to you and Radiant specifically. All right, everyone knows you're French, but not many people know you're not all French, you know. Yeah. So, so you can you can talk about that as uh, and you know what diversity means to you, as well as maybe some of the struggles that you might have faced when people find out that you aren't Japanese, and you know how that played out. Hmm. Uh, not that much struggle when people find out that I was not Japanese because I don't think they care. That 
as long as, as they enjoy the story, that's, I, I don't think that's a uh, point of, uh, yeah. Well, what about the, what about the, you know, the purists who didn't want you to do manga? Oh, they don't want me to do manga, so they live their life. <laughs> I yep. do manga. No, yeah. I'm not waiting for the green light to, to, to make yeah, manga. Yeah, I need yeah, to make yeah. manga. I want to make manga. That's yeah. It. So uh, that's not an important point. Yeah. What's well, so the, the diversity, diversity yeah. angle, what that means to you, and you know what? Because a lot of people just know you're French, but you know there's there's more to it. Yeah. Uh, so my father is not French, and I have a double, and now three nationalities because I live in Canada and I have the Canadian uh, nationality as well. As well. Um, so my father is from Portugal and he came in France when he was a teenager. And so I grew up in a place where we were all coming from families that were not French. All of us in my neighborhood. That was the France that I grew up in. That was my world. Yeah. So because of that, because we were we were French in the sense that we were born there, but all of us have family background and histories that came from other places. And uh, most of us were from around the Mediterranean Sea, so from uh, Spain, Portugal, uh, North Africa. That was the case of most of us. But we were French in the sense that we, we grew up there. So that's some point that I develop into the, the history, the, the, the story of uh, the plot of Radiant. Yeah. People that are kind of accepted, but not that much in their world, even if they belong to, the, to this world. Uh, yeah. That's, that's some plot that I wanted to develop in Radiant. Awesome. And, uh, I know you mentioned as well that uh, I guess that was similar reason because, you know, I'm sure you got asked because you have diversity in your stuff when the anime came out or when or during production that, you know, they asked you, asked you about that. And uh, I think it's really great to see that um, you do have diversity and you do uh, value the, the importance, importance of it. Um, and and I, I know you've touched a lot of people with the story and that kind of story of, uh, you know, um, people wanting to uh, belong. And it's it's a very mm -hmm. relatable story for literally a, every immigrant out there. Uh, and I also like yeah. the way that, you know, it's tied together with your action and the sorcerers and the things like that. Uh, for those who, I'm sure most people already know, but for those who don't know, can you, brief, can you touch on briefly on what, just a synopsis, a, sh a quick synopsis of what yeah. Radiance is about. So it's the story of Seth, a young sorcerer that lives in a world where, uh, where uh, monsters fall from the sky. We don't know where they come from. They're all different. And when they touch everybody, um, almost everybody dies, except for a few minority of people that will survive, but survive with an infection, with some type of physical change that they don't control. That's not a superpower. That's a burden. I wanted to make that clear in the story. So Seth, for example, my hero, he's got horns on his head. So we can see that he survived to a nemesis. That's the names of the, the, monsters. the monsters. And because there's that minority of people that survived the, the contact of the monsters, um, they can chase those monsters because they survive. They're, they're the only ones who can Battle. change the situation. Yeah. So they're accepted in the sense that people need them to build the world and to, to defend themselves. But because they survive, that's something weird for most of the people. They don't want to deal with them. So they put them in kind of um, some ghettos or some different islands of or, um, yeah. they don't make a proper space for them to live in so that was really the parallel between that and my family history uh people yeah. wanting migrants to build the friends after the wars and things like that but then when f when that was built we put them in ghettos i grew up in a ghetto in french ghetto and we put them into a ghetto just 
to, yeah. to say, okay, yeah. you're here, but stay here. Like, yeah. We yeah. don't want uh, uh, you yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm sure for those who are listening, you know, if you, you can definitely draw the, the parallels and I think is also inspiring to <clears throat> push more creators to kind of draw from their real world mm. to, you know, input into, into their, into their content. Cause I'm sure that that is partly what, uh, what works for you as well as it being a personal project, creating stuff that you want to see mm. and that turning out to be your most uh, successful thing to date right before correct me if I'm wrong you almost <laughs> you almost you almost deuces <laughs> you almost <laughs> yeah. quit quit the whole yeah. industry um yeah. uh that so you know, the, that, the, that, the final project that I was trying yeah yeah before, before, you know, yeah, before the um, <laughs> like right after the unsuccessful um at least unsuccessful in your terms I'm sure if I go look at it a lot of the a lot of that old content you say is is still available here and there right uh two of the series are still uh, in bookstores but one of them the one that i did alone mm -hmm. i i i got the rights of it uh, it it was thrown away from the catalog of the publisher at the time i've got all the rights of it and maybe i'm will be doing a, a digital content with it in the next year with my uh, french publisher Ankama. See, you never Just know to, to make that available. Yeah, you never know. Uh, sometimes some people, some some IP are lead bloomers. It might end up being. Yeah. <laughs> you never know <laughs> what happens. You, you know, let's not laugh at it too much before this 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 uh, uh, stream doesn't age well. <laughs> no, I, I was I was super proud of the project. I was yeah. really enjoying it, and I can say that people uh, feel it when they read the project. There's yeah. a lot of mistakes into that. I couldn't go back to this story and change it to make that a better story. It would be difficult. But if it can exist for the people that didn't get to, to read it at the time, yeah. I would try to, to, to make that happen. Just for people to know. The story won't be uh, finished at any point in the future. Yeah. But that was the, the, the beginning of Radiant. That was Radiant 0.5. Awesome! Uh, awesome! Um, can, and obviously, you guys. Uh, in case you don't know, you guys can all get you. You be you have like what sixteen, or you're working on the sixteenth volume of Radiant. Yeah, yeah. And so you guys can prep. There's a lot of content for you guys to go through. All fifteen <laughs> contents, uh, fifteen volumes uh, so far. Um, soon we'll be going into questions from you guys. I don't know how much time I have left, but maybe we can get a few a few questions. Hold on here. Oh, okay, we don't have too much time, but let's say let's see if we can get like one or two one or two questions from the audience. And while we're waiting for one, uh, can you briefly talk on your experiences dealing with uh, editors and deadlines? <laughs> the good question. Oh, very awesome question. <laughs> how do you handle it? Uh, how do you how do you be on time, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. That's how I do it. <laughs> Uh, I'm not always on time. I try to be, so I, I need a deadline to be able to work efficiently. That's that's sure. Yeah. But even with that, I always uh, throw the deadline away. And but eventually, the, the the book come out, and it's the better thing that I could do at this time yeah. with the amount of time uh, I had. Um, I had the hiatus for the last uh, year, so from book 14 to 15, I had an entire year between the two issues. Yeah. That was the first time, because otherwise I throw two, two, two books a year. So awesome. uh, that's, that's the plan. The plan is you know, to go the... further than that uh, with the third book. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I can I can imagine this is as difficult uh, difficult for most. And um, do you have do you currently have uh, assistance? And if you do, you know, or or if you ever did, what was the dynamic with that? How did you uh, manage that? Uh, I have an assistant that just uh, I, I do traditional drawings. Uh, so uh, thank you. Yep. Can we, can we see? Yeah, we can see it. So you see after, here, the un, 
super exclusive, guys. You know, <laughs> yeah. some people are gonna clip that, dissect it. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, but so so when I finish the inking of the the page, uh, I have an assistant and my studio. I, I work in a studio with some of the artists. Yeah. Uh, I have one one of the the guys there who he raised just the pencil and mm -hmm. scan the stuff. Then I can do the, the screen tones. I do that digitally, uh, the screen tones. I can do that without having the spending time on uh, erasing and scanning. So mm -hmm. that's my assistant work. And mm -hmm. other than that, uh, all the drawing, all the story, uh, of course, but all the drawings, that is my stuff. Awesome, awesome. I know, I know you, you, you don't have an editor, and that's how how you kind of are set up uh, with Ankama. And um, obviously, as you guys can see, his work is essentially mixed media because you're doing the toning digitally, but yeah. you do yeah, you're traditionally creating the pages. So that's yeah. that's fun to see. I'm sure a lot of people are interested uh, in the insight of how you're putting your pages together. I'm sure we don't have. I'm sure we're out of time. <laughs> Again, uh, Tony. This was amazing. Uh, I'm sure you've uh, enlightened a lot of people, opened a lot of people's eyes to your work. Um, even even beyond this, uh, uh, we're just grateful that you had, you know, you spared time for us, us little people, to come uh, to, <laughs> <laughs> to grace us to grace us with your presence. Trust me, it is greatly appreciated. And uh, uh, I appreciate, appreciate you, coming, you yeah, appreciate uh, you coming out uh, again. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the panel and the discussion. And that'll be all, Tony. I hope you have a swell, awesome, awesome day. Hope you have an awesome day too. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for having I, me. I, I, you. You have no idea how uh, appreciative uh, we are. I, Thank definitely you. me, but definitely everybody else as well. Yeah. Uh, and looking forward to. Uh, more success and hopefully more seasons of Radiance anime. Yeah, hopefully. Thanks, man. So, whoever, whoever the magician, the doctor, <laughs> or wizard of Oz, you you may you you, you may do do your thing.